Well, here we are, and we're going to talk this time about Taiwan and China. It's the 10th of April, or will be when this goes out, and we're going to talk about the cross-strait relationship between the Republic of China, which is what Taiwan calls itself, Formosa to the older ones amongst you, and China. So, it's timely, you know. I mean, we all, or not all, but many expected when Russia hit Ukraine that China would take Taiwan. But she hasn't. Everybody, uh, the senior analysts at least, that I know and respect, well, they thought so. I thought so. I thought, what an ideal moment. How to bewilder the world. But she didn't. No. And it has been an interesting time over the past year. There's been a high Western presence in the Taiwan Strait and South China Sea and a high Chinese presence in the Taiwan Strait and South China Sea. Indeed, at one point, 150 Chinese aircraft were sent into Taiwan's air defense identification zone. I mean, this is major. So... Yeah, all the signs were there, all the signals. Um, naval ships from the West, including a nuclear submarine, were sent into the Taiwan Strait. Provocative, you could say. And more recently, the U United States Se Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, repeated his earlier specific statement that Washington was opposed to any unilateral changes in the status quo in Taiwan carried out by China. In response, as far back as the Rome summit last year, China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi was calling for a clearer position from the U.S., from the United States of America, in regard to its adherence to the One China policy. The One China policy is where China reckons everything that historically is geographically China is one country, never mind whether it's Tibet, or never mind it's the Uyghurs, or never mind it's Taiwan, or never mind it's Hong Kong. It's one China. And you could argue that this is a chip China carries on its shoulder after a hundred years of colonialism, the century of shame and humiliation China had to endure at the hands of the West. I mean, clear, clear policy from the United States of America... And America's policy is the most ridiculously muddled policy in the universe. Secretary of State Blinken encourages all UN member states to jointly support Taiwan's participation in the United Nations. Well, there's a joke. China's on the UN Security Council, so it's, it's a non-starter. <laughs> but Blinken says this, and the United States of America won't even recognize Taiwan as an independent nation. So what are we? What is Blinken doing? He's fudging and muddling. Whether he ha actually understands the issues himself, I presume he does. Is he that ignorant? Is America all puff and wind? Clearly doesn't have a clear policy on Taiwan or the cross-straits relationship. And against that, we have a kind of mil militaristic approach from the president of China, who is strongly asserting a one-China policy. I mean, outcomes on, under Biden, if China were aggressive towards Taiwan, well, Biden would clearly crumple. But we do have a Trump presidency coming up. <laughs> you don't think so? I think it's pretty likely, don't you? Surely, I mean, you put your rational hat on instead of your emotional hat. If you wear your rational hat, then you will recognize the fact that there is a near inevitability about another Trump presidency, second term, and what would happen if China sees Taiwan under Trump's watch. Interesting. Big question, huh? China has a China-first policy that will not allow Taiwan to be independent. And certainly the Chinese interlocutors that we have had at the Next Century Foundation have made it very clear that if the United States of America tries to impose 
Taiwan's independence, there will be a war. But it's not likely, is it, that the United States of America would impose Taiwan's independence. Even the European Union wouldn't recognize Taiwan as an independent nation. And the one China policy that China pursues has been recognized and endorsed by most countries in the world. And like I said, China is a member of the Security Council of the United Nations. And China is strong. China is not weak as it was a hundred years ago. The issue of Taiwan is not really about Taiwan. It's about power politics. It's about the challenge between America and China. I mean, Taiwan's economy relies in, in significant part on trade with China. But what we might have and what we have to be wary of is that a war might happen by accident, by a miscalculation or as a consequence of a miscalculation, for example, a miscalculation on the part of the United States of America. But to be honest, unless Taiwan does something dramatically provocative, there is little prospect of a war between the USA and China. Nonetheless, the president of China has made it very clear that China will not tolerate Taiwan's independence over the long term. And China has been using threatening language, encroaching with its air force into Taiwan's airspace. And America, well... You could argue that there's less strategic ambiguity in the American position. I'm not so sure. Uh, you could argue that the Americans are making their pledge to su support Taiwan against an attack more explicit. I'm not so sure. I mean, China does learn. It's being more cautious. China's policy towards Taiwan is, well, is they're getting tips from the situation that's developed in Hong Kong. I mean, the same kind of disturbance we saw in Hong Kong will not be allowed in Taiwan. But what seems to happen is America acts and China reacts. China reacts and America acts. I mean, this tit-for-tat policy whereby China provokes America and America provokes China to little or no purpose. And there's the will of the 24 million Taiwanese people to consider. What do they want? Clearly, a majority really want the status quo. And whether they want independence or not, most Taiwanese are really frightened by China's military incursions and the possibility that China will take Taiwan over, whether economically or militarily. You could say that these recent policies by the People's Republic of China have done a lot to harm the position of the pro-Chinese group in Taiwan. But will China take Taiwan now? I guess not because it has the great One Belt, One Road initiative and it needs to see that move forward successfully. It would be, it's been a huge investment by China. China doesn't want to see that undermined. So it doesn't want to go with the economic war with the West. One option I thought was credible for Taiwan was to change the name of Taiwan from the Republic of China to the Republic of Taiwan. But I was reliably informed by Taiwanese friends that any political party that tried it would lose substantially. It's too radical a move for our friends in Taiwan. So what do we have? I mean, what about the prospect of China invading and taking Taiwan? It wouldn't take long. And there are plenty of precedents. And without even looking at Russia taking Ukraine, North Yemen invaded South Yemen, Morocco took the Spanish Sahara. It happens all the time. But Taiwan, some 20 million plus, whatever the population is, it's more of an issue, isn't it? With potentially horrifying consequences. And America muddles on. The Taiwan Relations Act is intentionally ambiguous. It's not a clear commitment to do anything for Taiwan in the way that NATO is, for example. Well, we have a different leadership in China under President Xi. His father was a famous and respected military leader in his day in China's liberation struggle. So President Xi thinks differently. China is in any case more powerful, and so it feels it can flex its muscles. And we, those of us who support Taiwan, must recognize the potential for a misunderstanding leading to an unfortunate military confrontation is grave. But China is not 
going to seize Taiwan. If it were going to do it, it would have done it while Russia was in the dock over Ukraine. It would have been the ideal time. And it didn't. So it won't. And one less problem for the world to deal with. So there you go. Taiwan continues and will continue because the great powers and their games have passed it by.